Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Rudy Rudy Fanad. I'll be your moderator today and I'm going to share my screen in a second, but you see also Professor Jolt Katona from Berkeley and we're going to talk about AI, right? So AI, generative AI, traditional AI and everything in between. Uh, so in the meantime, if you could uh, tell us where you're connecting from, just put it in the chat, please. Okay, I see California's in the house, no surprise. So San Jose and Lafayette. Okay. All right. And Denmark as well. In Cleveland, Ohio, Brazil, Chicago, Illinois. Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania, Dubai, and California again, and Switzerland. So I'm I'm based in Switzerland today. See Peru, Canada, uh, Canada, Germany again in the house. Switzerland again, North Carolina. Okay, anybody else? And uh, Orlando, Florida, I see, and LA as well. Okay. Okay, a couple of more people from California and Florida and Paris. Well, which Paris? Paris, France or Paris somewhere else? I think there's a Paris, Texas. I know, I know. I remember this. Uh, our CEO once uh, gave us a hard time. We didn't say Paris, France. And he said, there are 25 Parises in America. Which one are you talking about? So, uh, yes. Mexico, okay, Paris, France it is, okay. Los Angeles in the house, okay, Detroit. All right, I'm gonna start very soon. Everybody's in the house. All right, still trying to trickle in. You know, contrary to uh, popular belief, Zoom security is not so bad. So we're carding everybody at the door, making sure you're at the right place. And you see it here. This is an information webinar about AI, business strategies, and applications. So artificial intelligence, business strategies, and applications. As I said, we're carding everybody the door, making sure you're in the right place. You are. All right. Oakland, California. So next door, Germany, Colombia. All right. All right. So. Okay. So welcome everyone once again. Uh, with us, we have Jolt Katona, who is a professor of marketing, and uh, he's going to talk to us about this course. Uh, and uh, he's a, a very distinguished uh, member of faculty at uh, Berkeley. We're going to talk about this in a moment. My name is Rulof or Rudy Fallot. I work with Emeritus that partnered with Berkeley to deliver this course to you. And uh, I'm just waiting for a couple of more people. Yes, uh, Christophe from French Alps and uh, Maxime from Orange. County, California. These are the last to get in or not. All right, a few more people. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about UC Berkeley, of course. But uh, given that you are here, probably you've heard of UC Berkeley and you know uh, something about it. So we'll focus on the course, but also why is it important, right? Why are we talking about AI so much? Why now and why in the future? But also, because Berkeley is a business school, we're going to talk about business strategies, how to derive tangible business benefits from AI, right? And uh, we'll, we'll give you a bit of a, a preview of what the key takeaways would be from the course, who should attend, what are the benefits to you if you attend this course. Uh, we'll give you a bit of an overview of curriculum and uh, also how you finish the program, but you will have to work on a capstone challenge as well. Uh, we'll have some case studies to talk about, industry examples. Uh, Jolt will also introduce uh, his colleagues from a program faculty. And then at the end of the day, you will get something tangible. It won't be a piece of paper, but will be a digital certificate. And this digital certificate uh, can also be start of your path to alumni benefits at Berkeley. Uh, all right. So I see a few more people uh, got in, okay, from Colorado and Mexico as well. So UC Berkeley, uh, I think it doesn't need any introduction, but still for, for sake of good order, uh, UC Berkeley is a university of great distinction. 
that was, uh, as you can see here, founded in late 19th century. It is in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. It is a flagship institution of the 10 University of California Research Universities, and it's ranked number one public university worldwide by US News and World Report. Uh, you can also see here huge numbers when it comes to programs and the uh, students, right? So you see 40,000 students and thousands of undergraduate and graduate courses and over 300 course um, or degree programs, right? So this is the core uh, which underpins this online program as well. But uh, why? Uh, why AI and business strategies? You can see here a quote from, uh, from Joel's colleague, Peter Abel. He says, what's possible in AI and robotics today is quite different from what was possible even five years ago. This is a fast changing field. And uh, whether you talk about traditional AI or generative AI, <clears throat> the growth that uh, growth opportunity that is in front of us is tremendous. And uh, almost every company in the world these days uh, recognizes it. You can see here over 90% of organizations are investing in AI our AI activities. And, uh, you know, uh, some of them start with obvious cost savings and efficiencies, but others, they also do other things as well, which we can touch on today. So huge uh, market opportunity. Why is that? Uh, Jolt can give you a bit of a flavor for this, but uh, the hint could be obviously big data, uh, powerful computers, and uh, smarter and smarter um, people like yourselves uh, flowing into this field. So uh, this is why we are here. A very short overview first. Uh, what is this program about? So it's a two-month program. We think it should take you four to six hours per week. Um, what we think is uh, unique about this is that it combines an analytical rigor or academic rigor or Berkeley with its unique advantages being positioned in the Bay Area and therefore uh, close to business and technology companies as well. This is obviously something very um distinctive when it comes to other universities as well, because Berkeley uh, has faculty has access to these companies, to uh, their research and development, to their thinking about where the AI can uh, head next. And here I will hand over to Jolt. So you will hear from him uh, talking about what are the key takeaways and also uh, curriculum. And then I'll come back to you and talk about um, uh, digital certificate and your learning experience. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate, put them in the Q&A or chat if you like, ideally just one, and then we'll come and uh, stop by and uh, answer them at the time that is suitable. Plus, we uh, booked a lot of time towards the end to talk about, uh, you know, your questions. So uh, welcome, Jolt. Uh, happy to hear from you. Well, thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome, everyone. I'm really glad to see the enormous interest in this course. Um, as uh, Rudy said, please do uh, put the questions uh, mostly in the Q&A window. And um, you know, if it's relevant to what I'm actually talking about right now, then I'll answer them. So there's no point in waiting, but uh, we'll reserve some time at the, at the very end. So uh, takeaways is, uh, is a good, good way to start because uh, you wanna know what you're getting out of this course. Um, the, the main point before I actually go through these six points is the main idea, what we want you to get out of it is, is just get a sense of what AI can do and what it cannot do. Um, so, so really, uh, this does sound somewhat as a technical uh, question, but, but really it's, it's a business question, right? Because you, you as managers need to know what um, is possible, right? And then have a little bit of understanding of, uh, you know, how you can make that happen. So again, this is not a technical course, but we are trying to connect the dots between the technical capabilities and and the business applications, the business problems. And it's a fine line, but we have been doing this for five years, so uh, I think we get a good, good grasp on on what uh, level we have to go. Uh, to get this uh, get this done, get this objective uh, satisfied, and and um, often I get a question of what technical uh, expertise is needed, uh, and the answer is none. So this is not uh, supposed to be a course where you already uh, know how to code in Python and uh, run machine learning models. Uh, that is not the focus, but we'll show you a lot of examples, and we'll 
try to kind of convey the basics, uh, the fundamentals of how these things work. So go, going through the six takeaways, um, really the, the first point uh, captures most of what I, I was saying. The second point here is, is uh, generative AI. And obviously, uh, if it was not for generative AI, 80% uh, of you probably wouldn't be here for, for now. Uh, but the, the course, uh, I think there's a good job in explaining how uh, generative AI is really, seems like a spectacular uh, new frontier, but, but it really, it's a gradual buildup of what has been happening in, in the past uh, five to 10 years. Uh, but of course it opens up a lot of possibilities uh, uh, for for the applications and at the same time creates a gigantic hype that you will have to learn to kind of uh, be aware of and and to manage it. And and just as a fun fact, uh, the quote from my colleague Peter talked about you know five years ago what was possible and what is possible now, and he's absolutely right. But it was exactly five years ago when we first recorded uh, the, the the beginning of this course. And of course, we have to update it. We work hard for our money. <laughs> we have to do a lot of updates. Uh, but in that very first introductory video, I used uh, GPT-2 uh, to generate a script um, that basically kicked off the course. So that was five years ago, right? And Chat GPT just came out, uh, you know, about a year ago, uh, but the basic capabilities have been there for, for a very long time. And and if you look at the quality, it's it's actually it's actually very similar for for that particular purpose. Of course, there's there's a lot more what it can do. All right. So ne next on to uh, kind of the organization that that is that is one of the crucial aspects from a management perspective. Okay, uh, we understand how how it works. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, what it can do, but like, how do you or how do you organize your business around this? How or how you organize teams around this? So we have we have uh, uh, an expert uh, in organizational sciences who who will uh, come in and uh, and talk about it, and and of course he is he's also doing this specifically in the AI setting. Um, now the next one here is about communication. Um, and you know this this naturally follows from the idea of you being able to understand the basics. Um, and the purpose for uh, the, the reason that we want you to understand the basics is not necessarily so that you can implement yourself. In fact, you're probably not implement yourself unless you already know how to do that. But the purpose of of understanding is the, the basics is that you can, ask the right questions and hopefully you can even understand the answer uh, if you ask the right questions. So how you communicate with those people who are kind of, kind of at the lower levels, have very good technical expertise, but maybe do not have that big picture, uh, high level view of what needs to be done. Um, and this brings us to the next point, which is pitfalls. Of course, there's always uh, ways to mess it up. And uh, we'll show you a couple of examples. Uh, try to figure out how to how to avoid that. And then, of course, uh, the last point here is that you, you'll be part of a community, and uh, uh, you will uh, know some of your peers. Um, and you know, I, I hesitate to overemphasize how what you get out of the course is your peers, because uh, there's content as well, and that is the the fundamental value in the course. But of course, there's tremendous uh, value in you coming together and learning together and getting to know new people, especially people who are interested in the exact same topics as, as you are. All right, now let's move on to the next slide. Uh, who should attend? So this is a, this is a, a good question. Um, we, again, try to make it as uh, kind of inviting as possible in the sense that we do not require uh, a lot of uh, or any uh, technical background. Um, what we need is for an appetite to to learn. So we are going to show you a couple of equations, not not too many, but uh, do not be uh, you know scared away uh, by some of the intuition behind these models. So that's that's one thing, but no technical expertise needed. And the other thing is we 
this is a business class, so um, we want people who have some business experience. Now, how much business experience? It 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 doesn't really. The course is not really limiting. Uh, we have a huge range. We have senior leaders, um, all the way down to you know just data scientists who know how to do the technical aspect, but maybe have have less of a less of a perspective on what is going on. Um, at the level of, uh, of a group or a division or the organization. Um, so, it's, so it's pretty flexible. Um, I mean, it's hard to tell in advance if the course is right specifically for you, uh, but hopefully this webinar uh, will give you more information to figure that out. Um, all right. Uh, thanks for the next slide. So how so how is the the, the course uh, structured? Uh, so we have um, you know a combination of recorded videos and live sessions, uh, just like this one. Of course, we're going to be talking about uh, specific topics, not a course overview. Um, and again, it's going to be a combination of fundamentals and kind of up to date uh, material. Obviously, more. Uh, reactions to what's happening in the world in the live uh, sessions um, and but we also kind of continuously up to, up updates the the recorded uh, videos as well and then we'll have a number of assignments uh, kind of um, many of them interactive there where you can um, kind of learn by yourself again this is not coding there's there's a number of very good tools that help you understand um, and even kind of uh, work on some pilot type code. I, I wouldn't say prototype, but uh, kind of uh, play around with uh, with models, which then you can ask someone, or if you have the expertise, uh, you can yourself uh, implement something. Uh, all right. Um, next uh, slide. Yes. Uh, so what one of the things here is a lot of. Um, we have a lot of case studies, uh, applications, of course. That's the focus of the class. Um, and what's what's special about AI is the is the kind of interdisciplinary nature. So um, as Rudy said, I am a professor of marketing, but I actually have a computer science background. So I, I, I have this kind of dual, if you want, if you want to say, schizophrenic view on the world. Uh, like, do I put my business hat on or do I put my computer science hat on? I, I'm in a business school, so mostly the hat is determined by that. Uh, but um, but it definitely requires to you to be open to kind of uh, connect the dots uh, between uh, these different disciplines. Um, as we move on to the next slide, let me uh, pause a little bit to take uh, a look, a quick look at the questions, if there's something. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Um... A couple of questions already here, Jolt, uh, for example. Um, Vanessa's asking, uh, given the capacity for generative AI to uh, quite uh, extensively support learners by creating courses on AI capabilities and strategies and industry strengths, could you please articulate the key differentiator this course provides as opposed to such self-study? And also what core technical skills will be gained from this course? All right. Yeah, and I'm just looking at uh, all these questions, and and this particular one, I will uh, address the differentiator in a second. Um, in terms of the technical skills, we are not going to again uh, learn kind of hardcore technical skills, right? This is a, a class for understanding, so not technical skills, but but management skills. Um, there's one question here from Jonathan about uh, how much, what percentage of the course specifically addresses emerging generative AI tools versus the broader field of AI technology. So this is a great question. And this is where I think one of our strengths is that we are not uh, hype followers <laughs> in the sense that it's pretty much impossible to teach a generative AI course. I, I see all these generative AI classes popping up and and I think it's impossible to do that without uh, kind of understanding the basics, especially because the, 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 the generative AI applications follow so uh, clearly uh, from kind of the, uh, the fundamental 
AI models, like a, a generative AI models, a neural network. Like how can you understand that without knowing what a neural network is? Um, so what we do in this class is instead of kind of focusing like, okay, this is traditional AI versus generative AI, we kind of mesh it together and we build up on each, uh, each of these um, um, building blocks uh, of, of how AI and how machine learning, if you want to go more towards uh, the, the architecture, how, how, it is, uh, how it is constructed. And this is not only helpful and necessary for your understanding of the, how it works and what it's, what it's capable of, but it will actually help you a lot uh, when you think about applications. I mean, just a quick thing here. If you think about all chat GPT applications out there in the world, um, and I, I don't have a statistic, like a, a hard number on this, but just what my experience and intuition tells me, what percentage of those applications are truly generative in the sense that it generates something new? It's a very small percentage. Most of those generative AI applications are summarization, essentially a search. Uh, you know, Google introduced language models to improve their search. Um, and most of those applications, okay, maybe maybe there's some chatbot component to it, uh, but it's it's not where the value is created. So even all the generative AI technologies are mostly not necessarily used in a generative fashion, especially if we look at where the value is. Now, of course, that will change and we will get uh, maybe in five years, like truly generative stuff and a lot of value out of it. But, uh, but for now, what we see is that there's still a lot of low hanging fruits uh, that, okay, maybe it uses ChatGPT because everybody uses ChatGPT. It's just easy to use. It's very convenient, but uses it for problems that are by nature not truly um, and only generative. Um, but great question. Um, uh, so let me um, walk through a little bit uh, through the modules here that will help you understand uh, what's going on. And then um, I'll talk a little bit about what, what's different uh, what makes this course unique. So um, we'll start with an introduction. Um, and this is kind of uh, as we would train a, a machine learning model, we'll pepper you with examples. And we'll show you like, this is possible, this is not possible, this is possible, this is not possible. I'll kind of show you the limits of a lot of applications. So that, that is uh, our approach to, to get you started. And of course, you might be familiar with a lot of applications already, but um, we discuss it from our own expert perspective, uh, three of the five instructors in the course. So uh, kind of a broad perspective on what is possible and how it actually helps you create value, which is why you are here. Um, then we'll move a little bit to, to do, towards this fundamentals. So machine learning basics, uh, and this will actually help you understand a lot like what is generative AI, for example. But we'll, we'll, just, we'll start with the basics of supervised, unsupervised, and how actually combining those two leads to, to generative, generative models that can do a lot of other things that are not generative in nature. Um, Module three is where we essentially cover the, the fundamentals of modern AI, which is neural networks and deep learning, which is behind pretty much everything now. Um, so we kind of have to understand um, that it's not complicated. Kind of the idea behind it is not complicated. The, the devil is in the kind of the implementation details, but that's not something you would have to know. But you have to know a lot of things about what does it mean to train a model? What kind of data you need to have to train a model? Um, what is the objective function? When you train a model, there's always an objective function that if you do not set it properly, uh, then you are going to end up with something useless. And the objective function is actually a direct translation of the business goal. So if you don't understand how that goes into training a neural network, then you are not going to be able to create a model um, or any kind of AI that helps solve a business problem. And a couple of other things that basically from the business perspective, from the application perspective, what you need to know about these things. 
Uh, then we'll move on to, and this is cut into two different slides, but uh, the three main application areas that we see, um, uh, module four and five, the three application areas, computer vision, natural language, and robotics. So these are the application uh, areas. So this is, we module three was from the bottom up, how, like how it is built, what it does, um, how it's trained. And then module four and five are from the other side, uh, what we are trying to do with it. Um, and of course, this, this is gonna be a, a lot of generative AI content in there as well, uh, with fresh updates um, uh, that we re record, uh, uh, Fairly often these days because of the, of the developments, uh, but what was interesting, I uh, just did a re re recording and I was like, oh no, like I have to change everything now. As I said that, but then I looked at the looked at the recording. It was a year or two ago, and it was actually pretty relevant still. And of course, uh, the examples and what you can do with it and what exactly the level of capabilities are changed, uh, but the basic idea of uh, why and what it's trying to do was exactly the same. It's just a little more computing, more data, uh, throw a lot of resources at it, and it, it, it becomes better. Uh, and of course, if, if it becomes good enough that it kind of goes over a threshold, then it comes into the public eye, uh, public view, and then it starts a hype, right? That, that was ChatGPT. It was basically when everybody became aware of language models. And they were improving fairly gradually, but they reached threshold. It was good enough that everybody was amazed by it. Um, and I'm not saying that a hype is necessarily just bad in the sense that uh, it overclaims what AI can do. Uh, a hype is something you have to be aware of because a hype opens up a lot of possibilities. Everybody wants, all the clients want AI now. You have to explain it to them that, okay, we can provide this for you, but we cannot uh, uh, yet uh, do what you're asking for because it's not yet possible. And this is where we move on to the, the kind of the strategy business side. Uh, well, the whole course is about business, but we move more towards this kind of this, the strategic uh, questions and talk about hype, talk about value creation, competitive advantage, and, and how you think about all that, which has changed a lot compared to what it was before AI. Like think, just think about all the open source stuff out there. Open AI, right? They're doing amazing work. Uh, sometimes they fire their CEO, but um, what they have done is amazing. Now at the same time, you can go out, download an open source model on your own computer, if you have a good enough computer and pretty much get similar results. And for most applications, you don't need the open AI level, but it's just easier, right? So most, most businesses use open AI because it's easier. They don't have to worry much about it, but um, for pretty much anything, there is open source stuff that can do as well as the leading tech companies could do six months or a year ago. So that, that has big implications for strategy. Um, and then module seven is where uh, my colleague, Samir, Professor Samir Shavastava comes in and will uh, talk about the organization side of it. And he not only is an expert in organizations, but he uses AI to study organizations. So it's, so it's pretty fun. And um, then we conclude with, uh, with the module where we look at, kind of try to look in the future, both from a policy perspective, what you need to watch out for in terms of you know, dangers of AI, um, dangers, in the sense of dangers for society, but mostly dangers are and opportunities for, for your business. All right, next, please. Um, so this is a very important part of the class, uh, the capstone project, um, which is where we ask you to uh, work on a project. Um, and again, we are very flexible on how real it has to be, whether it's at your work or whether it's something that you would like to do in the future, or you have done in the past, uh, but what we, and you, you can even team up with others. Uh, what we want to achieve is that you think through the whole kind of uh, series of steps, um, pretty much following the modules that we have. So you think through the whole uh, process of setting up an AI project. And again, you don't have to implement anything, but many, many students actually do implement and we love to see those. Um, 
and we love to uh, get updates. But you know, many students, uh, this is their favorite part of the course uh, because they get to try their own hands. Again, this is not something where you have to do implementation necessarily. What in the in the project and the and the submission, what we ask for is basically a document. But uh, but we see a lot of students that do actually get to implement it after the course because it's it's a fairly short course, so we don't expect you to uh, run things in in the in the eight uh, weeks or so. All right, let me take a look at the questions uh, real quick. Well, um, Ron asks if we'll touch on the LMs that are in market and the use cases. Absolutely, yes, uh, that will be. Uh, part of a, a, a live uh, session here. Um, Jay Akala, would this course help me teach in how to identify areas of my current domain to integrate with AI ML? That's absolutely, that's one of the main uh, purposes of the course. Uh, John asks, uh, will the course look at new business models that can be created using AI and private LLMs for organizations with huge amounts of content? Yes, that will uh, be an important part of the strategy discussion. Um, will there be any hands-on activities using generative AI? Um, yes, I believe so. But but this is this is you know some of those things that because of the open nature of it, uh, it's so easy to do it yourself, right? Even without the course. So uh, we will kind of try to direct you to to tell you what to try, uh, but. Uh, but for you, this is probably not the, the biggest contribution of the course because you just go out there and try GPT-4. Now you can generate images. It, it can it pretty much do, uh, do everything. Um, Rajiv, I'll come back, I promise, to the question of uh, uniqueness. But it was a certain spot in the slides where I want to talk about it. Uh, business DC or ROI techniques for generating models. Um, so Nav asks if we are going to learn about techniques uh, for total cost of ownership and ROI um, to show the business value of migrating apps or workloads. I mean, this sounds a little bit specific. We'll learn about the returns, like how much value. Uh, we will probably not uh, go through an exercise of trying to evaluate the exact ROI. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, what returns uh, you can expect and what and what the costs are. So we'll we'll talk about this, but at, at, at a little bit of a higher level. Um, Khalid, uh, his area of interest is to develop technical training from multi multitude of resources. Will this cover some aspects of training content development? Um, so I'm not sure if you are developing training for someone else, but uh, um, or this is for yourself, but. This is a great starting point. If um, I would say, if if you want to learn more about the technical details of AI, this is a great starting point where you can kind of go through different areas and just the very fundamentals, and then see where you need to learn more and which direction you would have to go. So that's what I would say. Mike asks, how will we avoid having AI be utilized in an unethical, unscrupulous fashion? Well, that is a hard question. Uh, I'm not going to answer it now. Uh, hopefully in the course, uh, you'll restrict yourself from using the AI in an unethical fashion, but we will have, um, we will have a, uh, a, a session, session and a half on, on algorithmic bias and, and, and ethical policy implications. Um, let's see, Mike has another uh, a fairly detailed content question, how an AI model uh, can self-generate uh, and evolve. Um, yes, we'll talk about that as part of the understanding of how AI models are trained and built and kind of discussion on uh, artificial general intelligence. Um, support, so we have learning, I, I failed to mention, but I think there's a slide there. We have learning facilitators. So, you're expecting a, a large number of students. So unfortunately, faculty cannot uh, do one-on-one -on -one with each student, uh, but we have office hours with learning facilitators that will walk you through. And the number of learning facilitators we hire depends on the enrollment. So there will be uh, a sufficient time uh, for each of you to connect with your learning facilitators, and they're extremely helpful uh, with your capstones. 
Um, let's see. Uh, we have we have a lot of students. So uh, the question asks about uh, what are the most relevant and interesting capstone projects from. 2023. I haven't looked at the very last batch because they have just submitted, but what's surprising to me when I look at the Capstone project is how little uh, or how few of the good ones look at and try to apply the, the very latest, the most hype technologies. And this is because of the low hanging fruits. There's like so many things like uh, companies that are still using faxes. I mean, just things like processing PDFs or fax information and digitizing all of that and using AI for it. And, and it's AI that has been around for maybe five years, uh, but five years is not a long time in, in kind of changing a, a, your business. So so what I would what I would say is that the, the interesting part about the Caston projects is what the ones I like is finding ways to generate huge amounts of value without a super fancy, technically sophisticated uh, um, technique. So that is that is what I like. Um, what is the opportunity to meet team members? Just a live session. So office hours, and then I'll, I believe we set up um, groups based on industries. Um, so that that's another way to kind of connect with people who have similar interests uh, to you. All right, a uh, lot of questions coming in. So I love that, but let me move on for now. Um, so this is just a slide that's uh, it's not that important. It's just kind of highlight some of the case studies that we cover. Uh, as I said, we cover a number of case studies. So that's uh, that's how we try to organize, but most business classes uh, do that, we cover a lot of examples of organizations and case studies and so on. So let's move on to the next slide, please. if we can, like even after this. Yep. So, so this is where I want to um, talk a little bit about the faculty and, um, and this is where I want to talk about what's make, what makes us uh, different and what makes us unique. Um, so if you look at the faculty, uh, that's me, you already know who I am. Um, dear colleague of mine is in operations, Professor Thomas Lee, he has been doing text uh, analysis for 20 years now. So he is, he is very good at understanding where we're heading. And it's, it's again, the, the content he requires, that was the biggest surprise. We had to re-record the content on obviously language models because uh, of what happened with ChatGPT. But then going through his content and trying to figure out what to re-record it, it was really just small additions because the basic, the building blocks have, have already been there. and. Just understanding what uh, uh, what is the role of counting word frequencies in a language model, huge role, or embeddings that have been around for a while. That that was for the basics of of language models, and you know that uh, that he has studied for for many years. But uh, he he also has very very excellent examples of uh, of applications of of various uh, nature. Um, he ha he has expertise in health uh, as well, so. Uh, uh, this this is what really makes our course uh, unique, I think, is kind of just the just the breadth of the expertise here. Because if you go down to the next slide, you see the other three instructors here. Oh, so I guess the third one is the last slide. But uh, um, there is uh, Professor Srivastava, who is the expert in organizations. A very different perspective on AI, but uh, again, he does. Uh, high-tech stuff on using AI to analyze organizations. And then we have um, Peter Abiel from the computer science department. So we have uh, kind of uh, not only different application areas represented at different disciplines, but also different uh, school at the university, the uh, Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, EECS, as we call it. So his main area is robotics. He has a, he has a startup in robotics and uh, he's the famous one among us, uh, uh, but um, that uh, should not make a difference in how, how good uh, his content is and how relevant his examples are. And then the, la the last uh, slide, uh, Matthew Stepka got split out to this one. So he is kind of the most application focused. 
he uh, has a background in um, computer science and law. Uh, so any legal questions, he, he, he is, um, has a license to practice law. Um, nothing he says can be used as legal advice, but uh, uh, he can answer questions about uh, the legal aspects, which are tremendous. And I know uh, very little about them. But more importantly, he has a vast experience in applications. Um, he, uh, he was at Google, he's working with those uh, Boston Dynamics robots. And um, since then, he, he quit Google and he is investing in startups. So he probably in his head has uh, two, 300 examples um, at, at any given time of the, of the latest and, and newest applications. So, so this is what makes us unique. Well, first of all, what makes us unique is that our program is the best, but why is it the best? And I think uh, what explains why it is the best is, is the, really this combination of different experts ranging you know, from marketing operations to computer science, organizational. So, so this is, I think, truly what's required to have, have a good overview of where AI is, where it's headed, and, and how you can uh, get uh, the most value out of it. Um, all right, next slide, please. Um, certificate. So you'll get a certificate. Uh, again, it's an online course, uh, digital certificate. Um, and if you co uh, complete other courses, we can move on to the next slide. Um, then um, you can actually uh, become uh, part of this community. I mean, even just with this one course, we'll, you'll become part of the community, but we have uh, multiple courses where uh, you can participate and uh, get a certificate of business excellence, uh, which is uh, kind of uh, like five courses. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact details, but uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, we can uh, um, cover that offline. Um, but again, all, all, all these are online courses, so, you know, we will not be meeting in person per se, but uh, we have uh, certain events from time to time. Um, we're welcome to come to those and um, you know, you'll all be part of this uh, community. So a uh, quick summary, um, it's about a two month course and the goal is for you to be better at managing AI and coming up with applications and getting the most value out of it. Um, so again, it's a combination of uh, recorded modules, live sessions, and work on your own, which includes the Capstone project. Um, but we have this great uh, set of instructors and learning facilitators. So between, um, I think, the five instructors and at least three learning facilitators, like eight, eight experts to guide you through this journey. All right, let's see. There's more questions coming in. Rudolf, do, do you have anything to add here? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you said, Joel, that this is a combination of live sessions and recorded sessions. Some people were asking if uh, if they miss a live session, if that's a problem. No, these are for your benefit. Uh, all of them will be recorded. Uh, you will get the slides as well. Uh, obviously, it's better if you can attend. Uh, when it comes to networking, we promote uh, networking with, among participants. Uh, you will have a discussion forum uh, where you can uh, participate, uh, comment on the content, and therefore connect with your peers as well. And uh, also on the course website, you will be able to see who your classmates are. Uh, if they provide social media handles, etc., like LinkedIn, then of course you can contact them. And uh, so these were come of, some of the points uh, that were coming up uh, throughout the Q&A as well. And uh, if you are interested in this, uh, you can sleep on this, of course. You can then, uh, or today, uh, check uh, the website. You see the, uh, the core, uh, link on the, on the slide, or you can schedule, um, you can scan a QR code and then schedule a call with an advisor. And uh, the advisor will go through, you, uh, go through this with you in detail if you have questions whether this is the right program for you and uh, also any other logistical questions uh, regarding uh, the next uh, cohort start or uh, payment uh, um, financing, you know, uh, help and things like this. Um, so please don't hesitate and scan the QR code and then you can follow up uh, with our advisors on one-to-one -one basis. 
Uh, and in the meantime, uh, while I'm talking like a DJ, Jolt has gone through your questions, uh, so we can still uh, attempt to answer as many as we can. Absolutely. So, so Rajiv's uh, question, for example, about capstone. Capstone. As I, as I, as I said, they're very flexible. We don't have very strict requirements. Um, 99.9% .9 of the time, the students have an idea for what they want to do, but uh, always happy to offer uh, offer ideas. Uh, but uh, usually, it's not a problem to come up with uh, with ideas. And again, it doesn't have to be uh, at your work. Uh, it could be something you want to figure out as a startup. Um, it could be anything. It could be something uh, that your spouse works on. It could really be anything, just something that you are excited about. Don't think of it as a chore. Think of it as an opportunity to explore your deepest desires in creating something with AI. Absolutely. So if you're in between jobs or you're looking for a, another role or you're a consultant, you know, uh, you can uh, yeah, pick a problem for a relevant for that company, for your dream company that you want to work for uh, or a startup, as Joel said. So, uh, you know, it is as realistic as possible for your benefit, not because uh, Jolt uh, wants to uh, implement it with you after this. It is for your benefits. That's why it's meant to be practical, but uh, depending on your circumstances, of course. Uh, Jolt, go ahead on Nikhil's question. Oh, yeah. One more thing on the capstone is that we often get questions about confidentiality. And of course, uh, whatever you submit, we don't share with anyone. And of course, we, we cannot sign an NDA and stuff like that. But uh if if you need to just hide information, that's that's totally fine as well. Um, but um, sometimes we share share capstones with other other students, and then we ask for your permission, of course. Um, Nicholas asks about uh, technical software tools. Uh, nothing needs to be installed on your computer. We, we again we we keep this very uh, low tech. Um, and uh, anyway, most of the stuff now runs in browsers, so nothing needs to be installed. Whatever you, we use, uh, it will be running in your browser. Uh, Paolo asked a good, good question about, is this part of a, a beginning of a training program? Um, so we, we don't have like a strict structure of what builds on what, but but it's, it's a natural starting point. Uh, but um, our courses are very modular and I, we don't, I, at least I don't even insist that you take uh, our, our courses, if you want to learn more, take courses from other universities. Uh, but um, I, I think I think it's it's hard, at, especially at, at this day and age and the pace of how things are changing to uh, kind of have a rigorous or uh, uh, kind of rest, uh, uh, an, an inflexible structure on courses that build on each other. Subir asks about organizational readiness um, to adopt the digital transformation in AI. And absolutely, that's exactly what we will cover, uh, mostly in module seven and um, a live session by Professor Shivastava. Martin asks about startups uh, we need to pay attention to. Yes, um, this is where uh, my colleague Matthew Stepka comes in. He knows everything about startups. Um, and he's of course not only aware of the startups that he invests in, but all the competitors and all the ones that he did not invest in. So I think he, know, he knows the space we are actually organizing. This is for, for an MBA class. We're organizing a, a panel of VCs. So startups we do know a lot about. Got a question by Nick uh, about uh, case presentations by industry experts. So not specifically case presentations, but we do have uh, guest speakers, uh, industry guest speakers. And then, you know, Peter will talk about his own startup and then Matthew will also talk about startups that he invested in. So mm -hmm. in some sense, yes, but we do have industry speakers for sure. Uh, Giuseppe, you've been head of marketing. Good for you, because I, I like marketing uh, for the last few years and currently on a career break. Uh, could this impact my final project? Um, not in any bad way, <laughs> uh, but again, just pick, pick a project or from your former company or whatever company you want to work for. Again, we don't, we don't need a lot of um, details from the company. What we need is your contribution and do some research on data that's out there. So absolutely no problem if you're between jobs. 
Here is one organizational question, Jolt, I guess, uh, about schedule of live sessions. Typically, yeah. we share it once we start the course, but uh, of course, uh, this will be centered around Berkeley, but uh, we'll try to do it so that many people from different time zones can join. And as we said, if it doesn't work, you can always watch the recording, uh, but uh, we'll uh, commit to the schedule in the orientation webinar, which we will do once you start the program. So, so the, the schedule is already set. So um, what I can tell you is that all the live sessions, and this is the faculty live sessions. I don't know. I don't know about the office hours, but all the faculty live sessions are at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so uh, the different days, the days are kind of random, but they coincide with some of the modules. Um, certificate slide. So certificate questions, uh, I can uh, not really answer in detail, but uh, if um, you have questions about a certificate, please uh, reach out offline. Um, What's the very next step? Uh, also coming back to this, it's uh, this uh, QR code, right? So if you schedule that QR code or you go to the website, there you can register. So you can start the program, right? Uh, there are no prerequisites, uh, but what you need to do is register and uh, and pay the fees, uh, I assume. And then Anton is asking about the start date. So 17th is the orientation, right? Um, again, I would ask the team for that, uh, but uh, please maybe let's uh, uh, register and then you will see the start date. And then within that, you will have the sessions uh, set so if the timing for the faculty is 8 a.m. Pacific, that's fine. But uh, you will see the dates as well. And you will see the office hours all during that orientation. Yeah, I can definitely confirm that uh, I see this iteration starting in January, uh, uh, late January. So no, that seems consistent with that. Is this course graded? Um, are there any assessments to test our understanding? But very strict grading, usually 40% of students pass. Just joking with you. <laughs> uh, we do assessments um, to, to check that you understand, but um, it's, it's basically a pass fail. And if you do your submissions, you pass. So it's uh, not graded in the sense of A, B, C, F. Uh, do we have an opportunity to present our, our own case study and ask for feedback? Uh, so the, uh, during office hours, so uh, you can definitely do that. And, and you know, if if you if you do some implementations and you get serious about it, then uh, and you you reach out to faculty after the fact, then uh, then we also take a look. Um, uh, Wim asks, as lots of AI is a bit of a hype. Absolutely agree with that statement. How can we convince managers that this course is not part of the hype, but a good investment for the future? Um, you mean uh, you want to convince them to pay for it? <laughs> I guess that that is yes. the reason to uh, Yeah, it's hard, right? Uh, there's a question about how this how this uh, differs from an INSEAD course. Uh, I actually did my PhD at INSEAD, and uh, INSEAD is very good at uh, following the hype, but uh, maybe the best way to convince them is just to tell them that we started this in 2019, and we have had uh, very strong enrollment, and we trained thousands of people, um, even if before it was a hype, right? And, and it's still the same class structure, and, and it's probably the longest running course, and um, we have... Uh, we even have famous people like Peter Abiel who, who is teaching in it. So uh, it's it's not just trying to uh, milk uh, the, the hype cow for now. Uh, you don't have to pay for any tool, Andres. That's good. Next step after completing the course. Uh, so that question disappeared, but... Uh, you know, again, as I said, this is this is a little bit of an eye opener course, and will ho hopefully help you understand. Um, well, for it, it it will help you a lot, and kind of if you're if you're a manager, but as a manager and managing AI projects, but it will also help you figure out what you don't know and what what else you need to learn. And it's a first step in gaining this certificate of uh, business excellence. That's why I went oh, yeah. back to the page. So that's, that's why it's uh, one of the first steps. And once you complete the uh, COBE uh, or the certificate of business excellence, you can get uh, associate alumni status of Berkeley. 
which obviously then uh, gets you even more clout um, than uh, just a single certificate, which gives you uh, a lot of uh, uh, great recognition online, I'm sure. A lot of people share their certificate on uh, LinkedIn or on their CV. Uh, but uh, if you want to get uh, any of these benefits, alumni resources, communication with Berkeley, then uh, so this Kobe is even um, even another next step after that. I have a question about the detailed schedule, and um, you know, I I have no control over that, but hopefully uh, you can send it yes. out to Nick. I think Nick, you can uh, talk to your advisor about this and uh, see what can be done. But you have probably heard already, Jolt, uh, the live faculty sessions will be around a, or will be at eight. AM uh, Pacific, that's the best we can do for now. We can give you perhaps the dates and the office hours as well, but all of this will be recorded as well in case you miss it because you travel that week, right? And there is no uh, penalty for missing it either in terms of points or certificates. All right. Gina, you're launching your own startup. Congratulations. How to implement AI into my business plan. Uh, that, I think that's perfect. Uh, you, you, you already have a capstone project. <laughs> so there you good. go. Uh, when uh, you can begin to log into Canvas, I don't know how many live sessions. So four live sessions, um, eight weeks, and uh, I think one office hour a week, I believe. And somebody asks, it's one to one. It's it's not one to one, but it's one to few uh, with the learning facilitator. Um, so it's, it's split out so that it's not like uh, everybody's showing up like several hundred people. The, the, the live sessions with the faculty, everybody shows up in the, in the same, same session. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying all the questions, uh, peppered by questions, um, but um, that's for the live sessions and then more, uh, more split for the office hours. All so right. thank you so much for a great turnout, great questions. I uh, hope you got the answers you were looking for. If you still have questions, uh, you can go to the website. So you see here the link, uh, emrt.us slash bh hyphen ai hyphen apply now. There you can download the brochure. You can read up on that. Uh, if you register for this webinar, you also get the slides anyway. You will get the recording also. Uh, but if you scan this QR code, you can uh, talk to an advisor in more detail, one-on-one, -on -one, and figure out whether this is the right fit for you. We hope mm -hmm. to see you there. Uh, Jolte is definitely going to be there uh, and uh, ready for you uh, with his colleagues as well, uh, learning facilitators as well. Uh, so this is very exciting time for AI and um, for everybody around it. Uh, and it's not just the generative AI, but it's uh, the traditional AI and what we're going to focus on also, how to derive tangible business benefits from it, right? This is, um, again, a business course uh, together with uh, computer science uh, experts as well. Any other final questions? All right, congratulations on the startup. I think, uh, Gina, you will be able to hire some people there already as well. So that's great uh, to help you to uh, take it forward. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, it's really a must that you sign up for the course. Uh, and hoping to see you in about three weeks, I believe, is when the first live faculty session is. So have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jolt. And thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.